I am Tina Robinson, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Sand Hills Region Teacher of the Year at Mineral Springs Elementary. I am Tiffany Wynn, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Piedmont Triad Region Teacher of the Year at Thomasville Middle School. I am Rachel Fry, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Southwest Region Teacher of the Year at East Lincoln High School. I'm Shay Bolick, and I'm the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Northwest Region Teacher of the Year at South Cowell High School. My name is Rachel Ray. I'm the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Western Region Teacher of the Year at Madison High School. I am Ryan Henderson, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Charter School Teacher of the Year at Sugar Creek Charter School. Lesson plans, quarterly plans, student development plans. You go the extra mile planning for others. Who goes the distance for you? At Equitable, we've been working with educators for over 160 years. Let's build a plan that reflects where you are today and where you want to be tomorrow. So whatever you imagine for your future, let us show you how a retirement savings plan can help. You have the vision. We have the blueprint. Let's plan how. Technology plays a massive role in our students' education. I'm grateful that Lenovo has paired up with education because they know that the future is technology. The future is in the things that they're doing. I love having a portable workstation everywhere I go. I need it for my job. I need it to be successful. I love my Lenovo. I, want you, I really oh, genuinely love my Lenovo. At No Kid Hungry, we're working to increase access to healthy meals for children. No one understands better than teachers that students cannot learn if they're hungry. We hope this Teacher of the Year cohort will help others recognize the connection. No Kid Hungry is awarding all finalists Amazon gift cards. This is our way to say thank you for all you do for the children of the state. Congratulations from No Kid Hungry. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff Gravely and I am honored to represent NC State Athletics in support of the Teacher of the Year nominees. Congratulations to each of you for your hard work and dedication that has brought you here today. You know it takes a certain mindset and commitment to be successful as an educator. Values such as trust, accountability, passion, and empathy get into helping shape the next generation of our community. Here at NC State, we believe in these same core values, which are our four pillars to strengthen the pack. Our mission in athletics is to strengthen the pack through the development of think and do student athletes. And I cannot think of a better partnership than one that supports the folks who live out this mission day in and day out. For the seventh year in a row, NC State Athletics is privileged to be a sponsor of the Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year Ceremony. Congratulations to everyone nominated we look forward to honoring you and celebrating your achievements. Best of luck as you wrap up this school year and begin planning for what will be an exciting new adventure this fall. Thank you so much and go Pack! I didn't always
always know that I wanted to be a teacher. Um, now my teachers knew that I was gonna be a teacher. Um, I, here, I used to get in trouble in Miss Henderson's class in the third grade for getting out of my seat and helping others do their math homework or helping them do their cursive. Um, you know, we have parents here that can remember me tutoring them in the seventh grade. So I think the foundation was always there. I just didn't know that I wanted to be a teacher yet. Um, it actually, Miss McCann, my high school biology teacher, she kind of planted the seed of, Ms. Schulte, I know you say you want to be a doctor. No, you're going to be a biology teacher. And she was right. This is also my third year at a new tech school, which has been really amazing. I've had the opportunity to um, embed their four focus areas into my professional practices, and I've really grown so much in developing thought-provoking and meaningful project-based learning lessons for my students. This year, I'm really excited. My colleagues and I are going to ISTE this summer to present some of the amazing projects that I've created and done with my learners. When I was in early high school, the mill closed, and that changed my life as I knew it. Um, this was the same time that my parents were divorcing, so I went from a two-parent house um, with married parents to a single-parent home and a mom who was in the process of losing her job. Um, so the future looked really uncertain for me, but the one certain that I had was school. I had always found comfort and purpose and belonging in learning um, from my first teacher who was my mom to you know my kindergarten and elementary and, and middle school teachers. School was a, always a place where I felt like I had a purpose, I had a voice, and I knew what to do. And in that season of uncertainty, school gave me a certainty. I'm sure that, you know, that may or may not have been a coping mechanism for the things that I couldn't control, but I became a master at school. When I was a little girl, my brothers were quite a bit older than me, and I was an avid reader. And the library at my school didn't have some of the books I enjoyed reading because they were chapter books. So I remember begging my brother to go to his high school library and bring me books. And just growing up, I didn't have a whole lot of experiences outside of school. And I remember those field trips, those cultural activities, and just the stories that my teacher shared with me really helped expand my horizons. And I knew that that's something that I wanted to give back to kids in rural communities. When I got to middle school, I encountered this one teacher. Her name is Nancy Larabo today. And it was that one teacher who stood for me and she pushed me um, the same way that I've, I have learned to push my students now. And because of her, I felt like I needed to be that voice for students who were just like me, for students now that teachers don't understand either. She is the reason why I am here as, a, as an educator today. And if I ever had the opportunity to tell her, how much she means to me. I didn't know how much representation meant until I met her. Um, she's a wonderful person. I haven't seen her in about um, in 20 years. But if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here now. There were times where I just wanted to just give up. But because of that, that sixth grade year, she pushed me, she was there for me not just that one year, she was there for me all throughout middle school. And she was there for me throughout high school, she helped me get scholarships to college when you know, I didn't have anybody else, it was that one teacher. And it, education is just so important to me as far as being a teacher. My background at school has always been my safe place. I love reading, I passionately love learning. Uh, when I was eight and my sister was four, I taught her how to read before she went to kindergarten. I wanted her to go in prepared. <laughs> um, and past that point, I have had lots of opportunities with various teachers to learn and to grow. In fifth grade, my teacher, Mr. Herndon, allowed me as a fifth grader to teach a unit in history. I required my classmates to learn and memorize the Gettysburg Address. I'm not even kidding. Like they, <laughs> um, they had to recite that before the class. Seven years later, when we graduated, they still remembered. <laughs> As a junior here, I had an English teacher that really did out of the box teaching. She 
um, made us do all of the senses for a descriptive paper. So we had to go outside and smell the grass in order to write about it. We had to taste the grass if we wanted to, to write about it. And it just was different for me. It was not the type of teaching that I was used to and the classes that I was used to, but it was what I craved. I had another professor, um, teacher, I had another teacher that was a history instructor that I had my senior year and he talked about travel and being all over the world and it almost made me feel like that I was traveling with him with the way that he did his lesson planning in the classroom and I wanted that too. I've been a teacher for six years. I graduated from Gardner-Webb University in 2017 after battling Hodgkin's lymphoma my senior semester. I originally graduated with a degree in history um, but I minored in Spanish and I originally wanted to be a history teacher, but all the doors for teaching history kept closing, while all the doors for teaching Spanish kept opening, and so that's where I landed. Um, I've been here at Madison High School for about five years, and I'm the founder of the Staff Spirit Committee Club, uh, which was a way to boost morale during COVID. So I created that during COVID just to get teachers excited about being here and kind of give us some um, support during during a really challenging time at school. But in my free time, my husband and I um, are farmers. We have a Christmas tree farm and we love being outside and hiking in the beautiful mountains. Now, as a school teacher, and you have a family of six, it's me and my wife and four children, you're gonna need to supplement your income a little bit, right? So something you may not know is I used to do game show hosting at night. And <laughs> And it was like it was a, it was a Jeopardy kind of kind of deal where it was just musical Jeopardy. And I tell you, people can get pretty crazy when it comes to their games at night. Um, I didn't do it for long because I had to get up in the morning to teach school. So uh, I did it for a little while. It was fun. Uh, I've always wanted to be on TV, but this wasn't televised. So game show hosting was uh, an adventure that I took that a lot of people don't know about, um, but I do remember it significantly. Hello and congratulations to you, the 2023 District Teachers of the Year. My name is Ken Reynolds and I'm the Executive Director of the Bojangles Foundation. On behalf of our board members and over 7,500 Bojangles team members, we congratulate you for your achievements. Bojangles appreciates everything that you are doing in and out of the classroom to encourage, motivate, and care for students in your districts. You are grooming our future county, state and national leaders. Thank you for your commitment. Since 1979, Go Global NC has been delivering transformative global leadership programs and trainings to connect North Carolina and the world. Our innovative programs for teachers, policy and business leaders empower North Carolina with the skills, understanding, connections and knowledge to succeed in the global community. In honor of all that you do for our students, Go Global NC is proud to offer this year's North Carolina Teacher of the Year, the Carolyn Hunt Teacher Endowment Award, to join us on next year's Global Teachers Professional Development Program. You are part of a proud tradition. Since the mid-1990s, Go Global NC has taken more than 1,100 North Carolina educators on short-term immersion programs in 18 different countries. They return energized and equipped to help bring the world to North Carolina classrooms. Teachers from all grade levels and all subject areas use their professional development experiences with us to ignite in their students a curiosity about the world and develop the knowledge, skills, and attitudes to communicate, collaborate, and compete in an increasingly interconnected world. We are delighted that this award will allow our next North Carolina Teacher of the Year to join us on next year's learning journey. At Flo Honda in Winston-Salem, we know that education is the best investment we can make into our community. That's why we're proud to sponsor the North Carolina Teacher of the Year program. We know that teachers are the backbone of our educational system. They work tirelessly to inspire our students and to help them reach their full potential. At Flo Honda Winston-Salem, we're committed to investing in our teachers and our schools and making sure that they have all the resources they need to be successful. We know that teachers make all the difference. That's why we're proud to support all their hard work. Thank you. I believe that through education, what's past does not have to be prologue. I believe students can be educated to build a better, more just, kinder, 
more equitable future. And I think every school teacher possesses the power to build that future within their students. I also believe that it's important for our students to see how important relationships are. For me, relationships are foundational. I believe in infusing joy in every class I teach. I believe that passion and positive energy are contagious in the classroom. I believe if I create meaningful, immersive experiences for my students and they grow up with a positive public educational experience, they will pass that on to their children and their children's children for years to come, leaving a legacy of positive lifelong learning. I believe if you follow the five W's and the H, the who, what, when, where, why, and how, that will be the tool for organization for any part in life, not just the classroom. I believe that we need to accelerate the learning for all of our students, but still meet them on an individual basis to make sure that they get what it is they need. I believe that every child should learn and grow every single day in some way. That may be emotionally, socially, or academically, but each child comes to us with different life experiences, different academic abilities, and different talents. I also believe that relationships should come first in the classroom. I think that when teachers build and take time to build relationships in the classroom, then kids feel comfortable learning. They feel like they have a trusted adult in front of them, and they want to perform for you. They want to do well for you. I believe in unconditional positive regard. The idea that if my students make a mistake, I will still love them. It creates an environment where growth mindset is truly possible. For the past 25 years, the Burroughs Welcome Fund has championed educational efforts in North Carolina through investments in STEM education. We've committed more than $100 million to changing the lives of students and teachers across our state. Our programs provide enrichment opportunities, deepen relationships, and foster innovative learning across STEM frontiers. Join our network of educators, students, and grant recipients in a love of learning. To share in our mission, visit bwfund.org today. I am Casey Schulte, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Northeast Region Teacher of the Year, and I teach at Bath Elementary. I am Laura Wilson, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Southeast Region Teacher of the Year at Roger Bell New Tech Academy. I am Kimberly Jones, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Central Region Teacher of the Year at Chapel Hill High School. I am Tina Robinson, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Sand Hills Region Teacher of the Year at Mineral Springs Elementary. I am Tiffany Wynn, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Piedmont Triad Region Teacher of the Year at Thomasville Middle School. I am Rachel Fry, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Southwest Region Teacher of the Year at East Lincoln High School. I'm Shay Bullock, and I'm the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Northwest Region Teacher of the Year at South Cowell High School.
My name is Rachel Ray. I'm the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Western Region Teacher of the Year at Madison High School. I am Ryan Henderson, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Charter School Teacher of the Year at Sugar Creek Charter School. Lesson plans, quarterly plans, student development plans. You go the extra mile planning for others. Who goes the distance for you? At Equitable, we've been working with educators for over 160 years. Let's build a plan that reflects where you are today and where you want to be tomorrow. So whatever you imagine for your future, let us show you how a retirement savings plan can help. You have the vision. We have the blueprint. Let's plan how. Technology plays a massive role in our students' education. I'm grateful that Lenovo has paired up with education because they know that the future is technology. The future is in the things that they're doing. I love having a portable workstation everywhere I go. I need it for my job. I need it to be successful. I love my Lenovo. I, want you, I really oh, genuinely love my Lenovo. At No Kid Hungry, we're working to increase access to healthy meals for children. No one understands better than teachers that students cannot learn if they're hungry. We hope this Teacher of the Year cohort will help others recognize the connection. No Kid Hungry is awarding all finalists Amazon gift cards. This is our way to say thank you for all you do for the children of the state. Congratulations from No Kid Hungry. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff Gravely and I am honored to represent NC State Athletics in support of the Teacher of the Year nominees. Congratulations to each of you for your hard work and dedication that has brought you here today. You know it takes a certain mindset and commitment to be successful as an educator. Values such as trust, accountability, passion, and empathy get into helping shape the next generation of our community. Here at NC State, we believe in these same core values, which are our four pillars to strengthen the pack. Our mission in athletics is to strengthen the pack through the development of think and do student athletes. And I cannot think of a better partnership than one that supports the folks who live out this mission day in and day out. For the seventh year in a row, NC State Athletics is privileged to be a sponsor of the Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year Ceremony. Congratulations to everyone nominated. We look forward to honoring you and celebrating your achievements. Best of luck as you wrap up this school year and begin planning for what will be an exciting new adventure this fall. Thank you so much and go Pack! I didn't always know that I wanted to be a teacher. Um, now my teachers knew that I was gonna be a teacher. Um, I, here, I used to get in trouble in Ms. Henderson's class in the third grade for getting out of my seat and helping others do their math homework or helping them do their cursive. Um, you know, we have parents here that can remember me tutoring them in the seventh grade. So I think the foundation was always there. I just didn't know that I wanted to be a teacher yet. Um, it actually, Miss McCann, my high school biology teacher, she kind of planted the seed of, Ms. Schulte, I know you say you want to be a doctor. No, you're going to be a biology teacher. And she was right. This is also my third year at a new tech school, which has been really amazing. I've had the opportunity to um, embed their four focus areas into my professional practices, and I've really grown so much in developing thought-provoking and meaningful project-based learning lessons for my students. This year, I'm really excited. My colleagues and I are going to ISTE this summer to present some of the amazing projects that I've created and done with my learners. When I was in early high school, the mill closed, and that 
changed my life as I knew it. Um, this was the same time that my parents were divorcing, so I went from a two-parent house um, with married parents to a single-parent home and a mom who was in the process of losing her job. Um, so the future looked really uncertain for me, but the one certain that I had was school. I had always found comfort and purpose and belonging in learning um, from my first teacher who was my mom to you know my kindergarten and elementary and, and middle school teachers school was a, always a place where i felt like i had a purpose i had a voice and i knew what to do and in that season of uncertainty school gave me a certainty i'm sure that you know that may or may not have been a coping mechanism for the things that i couldn't control but i became a master at school when I was a little girl, my brothers were quite a bit older than me, and I was an avid reader. And the library at my school didn't have some of the books I enjoyed reading because they were chapter books. So I remember begging my brother to go to his high school library and bring me books. And just growing up, I didn't have a whole lot of experiences outside of school. And I remember those field trips, those cultural activities. And just the stories that my teacher shared with me really helped expand my horizons. And I knew that that's something that I wanted to give back to kids in rural communities. When I got to middle school, I encountered this one teacher. Her name is Nancy Larabo today. And it was that one teacher who stood for me and she pushed me um, the same way that I've, I have learned to push my students now. And because of her, I felt like I needed to be that voice for students who were just like me, for students now that teachers don't understand either. She is the reason why I am here as, a, as an educator today. And if I ever had the opportunity to tell her, how much she means to me. I didn't know how much representation meant until I met her. Um, she's a wonderful person. I haven't seen her in about um, in 20 years. But if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here now. There were times where I just wanted to just give up. But because of that, that sixth grade year, she pushed me, she was there for me not just that one year, she was there for me all throughout middle school. And she was there for me throughout high school, she helped me get scholarships to college when you know, I didn't have anybody else, it was that one teacher. And it, education is just so important to me as far as being a teacher. My background at school has always been my safe place. I love reading, I passionately love learning. Uh, when I was eight and my sister was four, I taught her how to read before she went to kindergarten. I wanted her to go in prepared. <laughs> um, and past that point, I have had lots of opportunities with various teachers to learn and to grow. In fifth grade, my teacher, Mr. Herndon, allowed me as a fifth grader to teach a unit in history. I required my classmates to learn and memorize the Gettysburg Address. I'm not even kidding. Like they, <laughs> um, they had to recite that before the class. Seven years later, when we graduated, they still remembered. <laughs> As a junior here, I had an English teacher that really did out of the box teaching. She um, made us do all of the senses for a descriptive paper. So we had to go outside and smell the grass in order to write about it. We had to taste the grass if we wanted to, to write about it. And it just was different for me. It was not the type of teaching that I was used to and the classes that I was used to, but it was what I craved. I had another professor, um, teacher, I had another teacher that was a history instructor that I had my senior year and he talked about travel and being all over the world and it almost made me feel like that I was traveling with him with the way that he did his lesson planning in the classroom and I wanted that too. I've been a teacher for six years. I graduated from Gardner-Webb University in 2017 after battling Hodgkin's lymphoma my senior semester. I originally graduated with a degree in history um, but I minored in Spanish and I originally wanted to be a history teacher, but all the doors for teaching history kept closing, while all the doors for teaching Spanish kept opening, and so that's where I landed. Um, I've been here at Madison High School for about five years, and I'm the founder of the Staff Spirit Committee Club, uh, which was 
a way to boost morale during COVID. So I created that during COVID just to get teachers excited about being here and kind of give us some um, support during, during a really challenging time at school. But in my free time, my husband and I um, are farmers. We have a Christmas tree farm and we love being outside and hiking in the beautiful mountains. Now, as a school teacher, and you have a family of six, it's me and my wife and four children, you're gonna to need to supplement your income a little bit, right? So something you may not know is I used to do game show hosting at night. And, <laughs> and it was like, it, it, was a, it was a Jeopardy kind of, kind of deal where it was just musical Jeopardy. And I tell you, people can get pretty crazy when it comes to their games at night. Um, I didn't do it for long because I had to get up in the morning to teach school. So uh, I did it for a little while, it was fun. Uh, I've always wanted to be on TV, but this wasn't televised. So game show hosting was uh, an adventure that I took that a lot of people don't know about, um, but I do remember it significantly. Hello, and congratulations to you, the 2023 District Teachers of the Year. My name is Ken Reynolds, and I'm the Executive Director of the Bojangles Foundation. On behalf of our board members and over 7,500 Bojangles team members, we congratulate you for your achievements. Bojangles appreciates everything that you are doing in and out of the classroom to encourage, motivate, and care for students in your districts. You are grooming our future county, state, and national leaders. Thank you for your commitment. Since 1979, Go Global NC has been delivering transformative global leadership programs and trainings to connect North Carolina and the world. Our innovative programs for teachers, policy, and business leaders empower North Carolina with the skills, understanding, connections, and knowledge to succeed in the global community. In honor of all that you do for our students, Go Global NC is proud to offer this year's North Carolina Teacher of the Year, the Carolyn Hunt Teacher Endowment Award to join us on next year's Global Teachers Professional Development Program. You are part of a proud tradition. Since the mid-1990s, Go Global NC has taken more than 1,100 North Carolina educators on short-term immersion programs in 18 different countries. They return energized and equipped to help bring the world to North Carolina classrooms. Teachers from all grade levels and all subject areas use their professional development experiences with us to ignite in their students a curiosity about the world and develop the knowledge, skills, and attitudes to communicate, collaborate, and compete in an increasingly interconnected world. We are delighted that this award will allow our next North Carolina Teacher of the Year to join us on next year's learning journey. At Flow Honda in Winston-Salem, we know that education is the best investment we can make into our community. That's why we're proud to sponsor the North Carolina Teacher of the Year program. We know that teachers are the backbone of our educational system. They work tirelessly to inspire our students and to help them reach their full potential. At Flow Honda Winston-Salem, we're committed to investing in our teachers and our schools and making sure that they have all the resources they need to be successful. We know that teachers make all the difference. That's why we're proud to support all their hard work. Thank you. I believe that through education, what's past does not have to be prologue. I believe students can be educated to build a better, more just, kinder, more equitable future. And I think every school teacher possesses the power to build that future within their students. I also believe that it's important for our students to see how important relationships are. For me, relationships are foundational. I believe in infusing joy in every class I teach. I believe that passion and positive energy are contagious in the classroom. I believe if I create meaningful, immersive experiences for my students and they grow up with a positive public educational experience, they will pass that on to their children and their children's children for years to come, leaving a legacy of positive lifelong learning. I believe if you follow the five W's and the H, the who, what, when, where, why, and how, that will be tool for organization for any part in life, not just the classroom. I believe that we need to accelerate the learning for all of our students, but still meet them on an individual basis to make sure that they get what it is they need. I believe that every child should learn and grow every single day in some way that may be emotionally, 
socially or academically, but each child comes to us with different life experiences, different academic abilities, and different talents. I also believe that relationships should come first in the classroom. I think that when teachers build and take time to build relationships in the classroom, then kids feel comfortable learning. They feel like they have a trusted adult in front of them and they want to perform for you. They want to do well for you. I believe in unconditional positive regard. The idea that if my students make a mistake, I will still love them. It creates an environment where growth mindset is truly possible. For the past 25 years, the Burroughs Welcome Fund has championed educational efforts in North Carolina through investments in STEM education. We've committed more than $100 million to changing the lives of students and teachers across our state. Our programs provide enrichment opportunities, deepen relationships, and foster innovative learning across STEM frontiers. Join our network of educators, students, and grant recipients in a love of learning. To share in our mission, visit bwfund.org today. I am Casey Schulte, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Northeast Region Teacher of the Year, and I teach at Bath Elementary. I am Laura Wilson, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Southeast Region Teacher of the Year at Roger Bell New Tech Academy. I am Kimberly Jones, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Central Region Teacher of the Year at Chapel Hill High School. Tina Robinson, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Sand Hills Region Teacher of the Year at Mineral Springs Elementary. I am Tiffany Wynn, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Piedmont Triad Region Teacher of the Year at Thomasville Middle School. Rachel Fry, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Southwest Region Teacher of the Year at East Lincoln High School. I'm Shay Bolick, and I'm the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Northwest Region Teacher of the Year at South Caldwell High School. My name is Rachel Ray. I'm the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Western Region Teacher of the Year at Madison High School. I am Ryan Henderson, the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Charter School Teacher of the Year at Sugar Creek Charter School. Lesson plans, quarterly plans, student development plans. 
You go the extra mile planning for others. Who goes the distance for you? At Equitable, we've been working with educators for over 160 years. Let's build a plan that reflects where you are today and where you want to be tomorrow. So whatever you imagine for your future, let us show you how a retirement savings plan can help. You have the vision. We have the blueprint. Let's plan how. Technology plays a massive role in our students' education. I'm grateful that Lenovo has paired up with education because they know that the future is technology. The future is in the things that they're doing. I love having a portable workstation everywhere I go. I need it for my job. I need it to be successful. I love my Lenovo. I, want you, I really oh, genuinely love my Lenovo. At No Kid Hungry, we're working to increase access to healthy meals for children. No one understands better than teachers that students cannot learn if they're hungry. We hope this Teacher of the Year cohort will help others recognize the connection. No Kid Hungry is awarding all finalists Amazon gift cards. This is our way to say thank you for all you do for the children of the state. Congratulations from No Kid Hungry. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff Gravely and I am honored to represent NC State Athletics in support of the Teacher of the Year nominees. Congratulations to each of you for your hard work and dedication that has brought you here today. You know it takes a certain mindset and commitment to be successful as an educator. Values such as trust, accountability, passion, and empathy get into helping shape the next generation of our community. Here at NC State, we believe in these same core values, which are our four pillars to strengthen the pack. Our mission in athletics is to strengthen the pack through the development of think and do student athletes. And I cannot think of a better partnership than one that supports the folks who live out this mission day in and day out. For the seventh year in a row, NC State Athletics is privileged to be a sponsor of the Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year Ceremony. Congratulations to everyone nominated. We look forward to honoring you and celebrating your achievements. Best of luck as you wrap up this school year and begin planning for what will be an exciting new adventure this fall. Thank you so much and go Pack! I didn't always know that I wanted to be a teacher. Um, now my teachers knew that I was gonna be a teacher. Um, I, here, I used to get in trouble in Ms. Henderson's class in the third grade for getting out of my seat and helping others do their math homework or helping them do their cursive. Um, you know, we have parents here that can remember me tutoring them in the seventh grade. So I think the foundation was always there. I just didn't know that I wanted to be a teacher yet. Um, it actually, Miss McCann, my high school biology teacher, she kind of planted the seed of, Ms. Schulte, I know you say you want to be a doctor. No, you're going to be a biology teacher. And she was right. This is also my third year at a new tech school, which has been really amazing. I've had the opportunity to um, embed their four focus areas into my professional practices, and I've really grown so much in developing thought-provoking and meaningful project-based learning lessons for my students. This year, I'm really excited. My colleagues and I are going to ISTE this summer to present some of the amazing projects that I've created and done with my learners. When I was in early high school, the mill closed, and that changed my life as I knew it. Um, this was the same time that my parents were divorcing, so I went from a two-parent house um, with married parents to a single-parent home and a mom who was in the process of losing her job. Um, so the future looked really uncertain for me, but the one certain that I had was school. I had always found comfort and purpose and belonging in learning um, from my first teacher who was my mom to you know my kindergarten and elementary and, and middle school teachers school was a, always a place where i felt like i had a purpose i had a voice and i knew what to do and in that season of uncertainty school gave me a certainty i'm sure that you know that may or may not have been a coping mechanism for the things that i couldn't control 
but I became a master at school. When I was a little girl, my brothers were quite a bit older than me, and I was an avid reader. And the library at my school didn't have some of the books I enjoyed reading because they were chapter books. So I remember begging my brother to go to his high school library and bring me books. And just growing up, I didn't have a whole lot of experiences outside of school. And I remember those field trips, those cultural activities, and just the stories that my teacher shared with me really helped expand my horizons. And I knew that that's something that I wanted to give back to kids in rural communities. When I got to middle school, I encountered this one teacher. Her name is Nancy Larabo today. And it was that one teacher who stood for me and she pushed me um, the same way that I've, I have learned to push my students now. And because of her, I felt like I needed to be that voice for students who were just like me, for students now that teachers don't understand either. She is the reason why I am here as, a, as an educator today. And if I ever have the opportunity to tell her, how much she means to me. I didn't know how much representation meant until I met her. Um, she's a wonderful person. I haven't seen her in about um, in 20 years. But if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here now. There were times where I just wanted to just give up. But because of that, that sixth grade year, she pushed me, she was there for me not just that one year, she was there for me all throughout middle school. And she was there for me throughout high school, she helped me get scholarships to college when you know, I didn't have anybody else, it was that one teacher. And it, education is just so important to me as far as being a teacher. My background at school has always been my safe place. I love reading, I passionately love learning. Uh, when I was eight and my sister was four, I taught her how to read before she went to kindergarten. I wanted her to go in prepared. <laughs> um, and past that point, I have had lots of opportunities with various teachers to learn and to grow. In fifth grade, my teacher, Mr. Herndon, allowed me as a fifth grader to teach a unit in history. I required my classmates to learn and memorize the Gettysburg Address. I'm not even kidding. Like they, <laughs> um, they had to recite that before the class. Seven years later, when we graduated, they still remembered. <laughs> As a junior here, I had an English teacher that really did out of the box teaching. She um, made us do all of the senses for a descriptive paper. So we had to go outside and smell the grass in order to write about it. We had to taste the grass if we wanted to, to write about it. And it just was different for me. It was not the type of teaching that I was used to and the classes that I was used to, but it was what I craved. I had another professor, um, teacher, I had another teacher that was a history instructor that I had my senior year and he talked about travel and being all over the world and it almost made me feel like that I was traveling with him with the way that he did his lesson planning in the classroom and I wanted that too. I've been a teacher for six years. I graduated from Gardner-Webb University in 2017 after battling Hodgkin's lymphoma my senior semester. I originally graduated with a degree in history um, but I minored in Spanish and I originally wanted to be a history teacher, but all the doors for teaching history kept closing, while all the doors for teaching Spanish kept opening, and so that's where I landed. Um, I've been here at Madison High School for about five years, and I'm the founder of the Staff Spirit Committee Club, uh, which was a way to boost morale during COVID. So I created that during COVID just to get teachers excited about being here and kind of give us some um, support during during a really challenging time at school. But in my free time, my husband and I um, are farmers. We have a Christmas tree farm and we love being outside and hiking in the beautiful mountains. Now, as a school teacher, and you have a family of six, it's me and my wife and four children, you're gonna need to supplement your income a little bit, right? So something you may not know is I used to do game show hosting at night. And <laughs> And it was like it was a, it was a Jeopardy kind of kind of deal where it was just musical Jeopardy. And I tell you, people can get pretty crazy when it comes to their games at night. Um, I didn't do it for long because I had to get up in the morning to teach school. So uh, I did it for a little while. It was fun. Uh, I've always wanted to be on TV, but this wasn't televised. So game show hosting was 
an adventure that I took that a lot of people don't know about, um, but I do remember it significantly. Hello, and congratulations to you, the 2023 District Teachers of the Year. My name is Ken Reynolds, and I'm the Executive Director of the Bojangles Foundation. On behalf of our board members and over 7,500 Bojangles team members, we congratulate you for your achievements. Bojangles appreciates everything that you are doing in and out of the classroom to encourage, motivate, and care for students in your districts. You are grooming our future county, state, and national leaders. Thank you for your commitment. Since 1979, Go Global NC has been delivering transformative global leadership programs and trainings to connect North Carolina and the world. Our innovative programs for teachers, policy, and business leaders empower North Carolina with the skills, understanding, connections, and knowledge to succeed in the global community. In honor of all that you do for our students, Go Global NC is proud to offer this year's North Carolina Teacher of the Year, the Carolyn Hunt Teacher Endowment Award to join us on next year's Global Teachers Professional Development Program. You are part of a proud tradition. Since the mid-1990s, Go Global NC has taken more than 1,100 North Carolina educators on short-term immersion programs in 18 different countries. They return energized and equipped to help bring the world to North Carolina classrooms. Teachers from all grade levels and all subject areas use their professional development experiences with us to ignite in their students a curiosity about the world and develop the knowledge, skills, and attitudes to communicate, collaborate, and compete in an increasingly interconnected world. We are delighted that this award will allow our next North Carolina Teacher of the Year to join us on next year's learning journey. At Flo Honda in Winston-Salem, we know that education is the best investment we can make into our community. That's why we're proud to sponsor the North Carolina Teacher of the Year program. We know that teachers are the backbone of our educational system. They work tirelessly to inspire our students and to help them reach their full potential. At Flo Honda Winston-Salem, we're committed to investing in our teachers and our schools and making sure that they have all the resources they need to be successful. We know that teachers make all the difference. That's why we're proud to support all their hard work. Thank you. I believe that through education, what's past does not have to be prologue. I believe students can be educated to build a better, more just, kinder, more equitable future. And I think every school teacher possesses the power to build that future within their students. I also believe that it's important for our students to see how important relationships are. For me, relationships are foundational. I believe in infusing joy in every class I teach. I believe that passion and positive energy are contagious in the classroom. I believe if I create meaningful, immersive experiences for my students and they grow up with a positive public educational experience, they will pass that on to their children and their children's children for years to come, leaving a legacy of positive lifelong learning. I believe if you follow the five W's and the H, the who, what, when, where, why, and how, that will be tool for organization for any part in life, not just the classroom. I believe that we need to accelerate the learning for all of our students, but still meet them on an individual basis to make sure that they get what it is they need. I believe that every child should learn and grow every single day in some way. That may be emotionally, socially, or academically, but each child comes to us with different life experiences, different academic abilities, and different uh, talents. I also believe that relationships should come first in the classroom. I think that when teachers build and take time to build relationships in the classroom, then kids feel comfortable learning. They feel like they have a trusted adult in front of them, and they want to perform for you. They want to do well for you. I believe in unconditional positive regard. The idea that if my students make a mistake, I will still love them. It creates an environment where growth mindset is truly possible.
For the past 25 years, the Burroughs Welcome Fund has championed educational efforts in North Carolina through investments in STEM education. We've committed more than $100 million to changing the lives of students and teachers across our state. Our programs provide enrichment opportunities, deepen relationships, and foster innovative learning across STEM frontiers. Join our network of educators, students, and grant recipients in a love of learning. To share in our mission, visit bwfund.org today. From the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, welcome to the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year Naming Ceremony. Yeah, that's it, that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I'm Sonia Brown, Education Program Director, and I lead the Educator Advancement Section, which is part of the unit known as District and Regional Support. I am so delighted to be with you all here today. Now, this year, with the support of Equitable Advisors and PBS North Carolina, today's ceremony is being live streamed across the, the, the whole state, actually, and uh, it's being done through the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter platforms. We know this live stream opportunity will allow for school districts to cheer on their regional finalists and allows for members of the education community to tune in live and celebrate the accomplishments of these outstanding finalists with us today. Our goal today is to not only name North Carolina's 54th Teacher of the Year, but to also establish another branch in the network of advocacy that happens in North Carolina for teachers and the teaching profession. Seated in front of me are the nine individuals that form the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year cohort. All of you have different gifts that you bring to this profession. And as teachers, you tend to give us so much, so much knowledge, guidance, confidence, support, stability, love, and success for our dreams. With all nine finalists, if you will, please stand, all nine finalists. Thank you. What a wonderful day to be sitting in your seats, and we are so proud of you. Our sponsors are tremendous partners who make this day possible for you, and their support to our program is invaluable, and I would like to recognize them at this time. 
The Burroughs Welcome Fund, our flagship sponsor, provides the financial support to enable us to host this event. Please stand Dr. Lou Muglia and Alfred Mays. Equitable Advisors, a financial services company, are financially responsible for our viewing audience to be able to watch this live stream ceremony. Please stand Marty Bullard, Tiffany Arthur, Matt Lester, and Adrian Casper. Thank you. Go Global North Carolina is committed to empowering North Carolina leaders to succeed in a global community and awards the state winner with an endowment to travel and learn about education abroad. Please stand Meredith Henderson. <laughs> Lenovo is the world's number one provider of educational technology and graciously joined us during the interviews back in February and gave each of our regional winners a state-of-the-art mobile device for their personal and professional use. Please stand, Libby Richards. <laughs> North Carolina State Athletics are a huge supporter of public education and we'll be providing our regional finalists with opportunities to be recognized and network with the Wolfpack this year. Please stand, Justin Link. Thank you, Justin Lisk. <laughs> no Kid Hungry North Carolina Campaign is an initiative of the National Nonprofit Share Our Strength Program. It was started by Governor Beverly Perdue in 2011 and became a program at UNC Chapel Hill in 2014. Please stand, Helen Roberts. Thank you. Bojangles Restaurant is committed to its community pillar of literacy and awards financial gifts to our State Teacher of the Year. Please stand, Ken Reynolds and Heather Utley. Flo Honda could not be with us today, but they graciously awarded the winner with a monetary gift. Thank you. Let's give all of our sponsors a hand, please. Mm -hmm. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the State Board of Education and the State Department of Public Instruction, who also supports our program with financial incentives. And that includes a one-year ambassadorship for the winner as a North Carolina teacher on loan. At this time, I'm delighted to bring up the Senior Director of the Office of District and Regional Support, Dr. Cynthia Martin, as she would like to formally uh, bring greetings and welcome you to this ceremony. Dr. Martin. Hello, hello, how are you all today? It is such a pleasure to be with you. The Office of District and Regional Support is responsible for several programs and initiatives at the department. Nothing brings us more joy than celebrating our distinguished teachers and principals from across the state. We could not do this without our regional education facilitators led by Dr. Sonia Brown. The refs reviewed 132 district and charter applications and portfolios. They planned interviews and they scheduled site visits to get us to this amazing event today. If the refs could stand along with their lead, Dr. Brown, and be recognized for all that you have put into this event. Woo! 
If you thumb through your program, you will see the names of all the teachers in the state that participated in our process, narrowing the field from the local to district to regional levels is a complex task made possible by the state selection committee members. I would like to ask them to please stand. First, we have Ms. Tyrona Hooker, the 2011 North Carolina Teacher of the Year. Next, we have Dr. Beverly Emery, retired Deputy State Superintendent and former District Superintendent. <laughs> Dr. Doug Yuri, founder and CEO of Yuri Consulting Services. And Mr. Bill Miller, who couldn't be with us today, he is a retired superintendent from Polk County Schools. These four individuals gave us their time and energy to help us um, narrow the field to name the next North Carolina Teacher of the Year. Let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> to our Teacher of the Year finalists, there are many other, he, other people here today supporting you. I would like to recognize the 2023 North Carolina Virtual Public School Teacher, Mr. Robert Leichner. Robert, please stand. <laughs> he is here today with the former virtual public schools teacher, Miss Angela Haynes. Angela, please stand so you can be recognized. <laughs> virtual public school teachers are North Carolina certified teachers who deliver high quality online courses to students from across the state, regardless of their zip codes. Welcome and thank you for supporting our regional finalists. In addition to the newly named Virtual Public School Teacher of the Year, there is a very distinguished group here that know exactly how the regional finalists are feeling at this exact moment. It is my pleasure to introduce to you some of the past North Carolina Teachers of the Year. I would like to ask the 2017 Teacher of the Year, Ms. Lisa Godwin, to please stand. Along with the 2019 Teacher of the Year, Ms. Mariah Morris. The 2020 Teacher of the Year, Ms. Maureen Stover. And the 2021 Teacher of the Year, Ms. Eugenia Floyd. Please stand. Also present is someone who has been a great support to you. Ms. Julie Pittman, please stand. <laughs> Julie served as the 2018 Western Region Teacher of the Year and now serves as the Special Advisor to State Superintendent Truett for teacher engagement. The next person I will recognize truly needs no introduction. That would be our 2022 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year, Ms. Leah Copper. If I, could, if I could take a personal moment to say, I listened to you just a few weeks ago at the State Board when you read that editorial and it touched my heart. And I just would like to say on behalf of district and regional support and the department as a whole, Thank you for advocating, not only for the teachers in our state, but also for our kids. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, I would like to welcome all and thank all of the supportive principals, superintendents, families, and school families that are here today or listening online. Um, we know that it takes a village to do what you all do, and we're happy that we can support you. 
At this time, it is my pleasure to intro introduce to you our Vice Chairman, Mr. Alan Duncan, who will bring greetings on behalf of the State Board of Education. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Very special moment to be here. This is a very special time. You will hear people say who have been to this ceremony for multiple years based on the positions they may hold this day and naming the principal of the year are the two real highlights of the year. It's just that special. It is for everyone. I'm very pleased to be here today on behalf of the State Board of Education. As we honor the 2023 North Carolina Teacher of the Year Regional Finalists and announce the 2023 North Carolina Burroughs Welcome Fund Teacher of the Year, who will be named later this afternoon. I know every member of the State Board of Education would agree that it has been our pleasure to work with the 19, excuse me, with the 2021 North Carolina Teacher of the Year, Eugenia Floyd, and the 2022 North Carolina Teacher of the Year. Leah Carper. For those who know them, you realize both of them lack enthusiasm for what they do. <laughs> but nonetheless, they are splendid. These two distinguished educators have provided the board with invaluable insights and guidance from their own experience that has helped inform the discussions about education policy and practice. They are smart, committed, talented, and very spirited professionals and represent the highest caliber of North Carolina's teaching professionals. They're thoughtful and candid. They don't hold back. They take seriously influencing policy to inform practice and we listen. We are incredibly fortunate to have them as advisors to the board and we have benefited so greatly from their involvement with our board. <coughs> Teachers are critical for all students. For those of you in my age group, you can think back 50 years, and I bet you can still remember who all your elementary school teachers were. You can probably remember them by name. As we look back, what an incredible impact these teachers have had on our lives as we go forward. It's an incredible impact. So to all the teachers here, I want to say, and all the educators here, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do. Your contributions are remarkable, and as life goes on, you will find yourself getting stopped by former students everywhere you go because of the impact you've made on their life, which is just a remarkable thing and reason for us to celebrate you among the many reasons to celebrate you. The board's vision is for every public school student through access to equitable resources and rigor will graduate ready for post-secondary education and or a career as a globally engaged and productive citizen. One of our key goals is to achieve that vision focuses primarily on the education professionals in our classrooms. We know that every student every day must have excellent teachers, teachers who are caring, teachers who are innovative, teachers who are leaders among their colleagues and in their schools. In short, teachers like the nine of you seated here today. We recognize that this vision will become a reality through the nearly 100,000 public school teachers across North Carolina who work so hard and make so many sacrifices for the benefit of our students. The nine teachers who we're celebrating today represent the kind of teachers we'd all like for our own children. These nine teachers hold their students to high expectations, but make sure that their students have the support to reach those high expectations. They take risks to improve teaching and learning. They love learning themselves, which their students can't help but notice and can't help but be influenced by. To the finalists, your role models for the students, your peers, 
and an inspiration for all of us in North Carol in the North Carolina education community. Congratulations to each of you. We are genuinely so proud of all that you are accomplishing and all that your colleagues are accomplishing. It is special to have you here today. It is true that teachers cannot be recognized or praised enough for the critical role that they play in shaping the future of their communities, our state, and our nation. So while only one educator today will earn the title of the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund Teacher of the Year, please know that the State Board of Education appreciates and applauds all of today's honorees, as well as all educators in North Carolina who work so hard to give students the knowledge, skills, and confidence to succeed, and ultimately to make a difference in the lives of our children. For those who have the least, we owe the most. Teachers carry out that commitment more than any other profession we have. They look out for those who have the least, and that's our children. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Dr. Martin and Vice Chairman Duncan. Thank you so much. Next up, you will hear from Roy Cooper, the governor of North Carolina. And each year, he provides a message of inspiration to all of our finalists. Please watch this, spe this special video message from our governor. Hi, everybody. Governor Roy Cooper here. Congratulations to our Regional Teachers of the Year on this well-deserved recognition. As the son of a public school teacher, I know how much strength, patience, hard work, and generosity it takes to be an educator. That's why we need to treat our educators like the professionals they are and make significant investments to keep them in the profession by providing the pay and the respect that they deserve. As Regional Teachers of the Year, your colleagues have recognized you as the kind of teachers we need. I know that each one of you goes the extra mile to make sure that our students are learning in a safe and healthy environment. We're so grateful for your work. And I want to recognize our current Teacher of the Year, Leah Carper. It was great seeing you at Northern Guilford High School a few weeks ago, Leah. You've had an amazing year. Thank you for the example that you have set for teachers across North Carolina. And I also want to recognize the Burroughs Welcome Fund for helping to make this program possible. Again, congrats to all of our Teachers of the Year and to our soon to be named 2023 Teacher of the Year. Congratulations, and we can't wait to work with you. Thank you, Governor Cooper, for that fine message of inspiration. The Burroughs Welcome Fund is the flagship sponsor for the North Carolina Teacher of the Year program. The president and CEO of Burroughs Welcome Fund, Dr. Lou Muglia, will come forth and formally bring you remarks on behalf of the organization to you today. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I am so energized by this event every year. I just love it and can't wait for it to happen. And to be here with you all is a real special treat um, to recognize our, our teachers. The Burroughs Welcome Fund is honored and grateful to be the naming sponsor of this event and included in the Special Teacher of the Year recognition ceremony. As I mentioned, this is one of my most cherished events since coming to North Carolina in January of 2020. Together with my fellow Burroughs Welcome Fund staff member that uh, I think you all know, Alfred Mays, I want to start out with our thanks for all of your efforts. They are truly tremendous. One of the great draws to me becoming president of the Burroughs Welcome Fund was the unique and long established relationship of Burroughs Welcome Fund with the education community in North Carolina um, uh, schools. Teachers, principals, superintendents-to-be, and superintendents themselves are important and essential voices in our mission. Never has their impact on our children, communities, and society been more critical. 
As we heard, the innovation and creativity displayed by North Carolina educators has been extraordinary. I think COVID brought this out and has been amplified even further in what we've been able to learn from that um, experience to bring new opportunities to our students and communities. Moreover, the commitment to embracing diversity of students, teachers, and administrators, including um, consequences of racism, have come to the forefront. I've not only enjoyed the celebration of our wonderful North Carolina teachers, but the opportunity to interact subsequently with four North Carolina Teachers of the Year now that I have been here to recognize. Mariah Morris, Maureen Stover, Eugenia Floyd, and Leah Carper. Truly all extraordinary, energetic, and talented individuals. They've been tremendous leaders and the chance to interact with all of the te regional Teachers of the Re Year recipients has been inspiring as well. Thus it is with great joy and appreciation we contribute to bestowing this Teacher of the Year recognition recognizing excellence, resilience, and commitment. North Carolina has exceptional teachers, and this decision for the North Carolina Teacher of the Year is always a difficult one. There are so many worthy recipients, and each regional Teacher of the Year is already a winner. We join with everyone here today in celebrating all of these individuals and the exceptional educator that has garnered this distinction. There's no endeavor more important in our society than recognizing these unsung heroes and supporting the efforts of providing the resources to our teachers to educate the next generation of scientists, artists, advocates, scholars, leaders, and global community citizens. Last year, the Burroughs Welcome Fund made approximately $7 million in grants to support education and diversity. Our ongoing award mechanisms include promoting innovation in science and math, the PRISM grants to support professional development and the, and the purchase of supplies, and our biennial career awards for STEM teachers, now called CAST awards, a grant of $175,000 um, recently extended to four teachers. Alfred and I are honored to have the relationships with this community that we do. We look forward to working with the 2023 North Carolina Teacher of the Year and the team of finalists as they continue to have great impact on student outcomes and success. Congratulations to these exceptional teachers that will have a lasting legacy for students in North Carolina. Thank you all for being here and thank you for including us in this important day. Thank you, Dr. Muglia. It is a great pleasure for me to introduce to you the 2022 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year, Leah Carper. <laughs> Leah Carper is an English teacher at Northern Guilford High School in Guilford County. She has, been, <laughs> she has been teaching since 2006, and in her role as Teacher of the Year, she has traveled the state as an ambassador for teachers and is serving as an advisor on the State Board of Education. Leah, along with her team, has visited over 52 school districts and 105 public school and charter school schools in our state. She has been a keynote speaker at various conferences, facilitated workshops, and she has participated in several interviews with local, state, and national media outlets. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and help me welcome to the podium our current Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year, Ms. Leah Carper. Um, thank you so much. Hi, best friends. How are you? Um, well, actually, let's ask that question. Um, how is everyone feeling today um, on a scale of one to six? If you could show me with your fingers. Okay, especially my teachers of the year. Let me see how you're doing. We got some threes. It's, you know, your tummy. It's, it's a thing. It's okay. We have to do our SEL check-ins everywhere we go. This is good teaching practices, okay? 
Um, it's okay to feel all these feelings. I have to tell you, it's been really hard for me to put together the feelings that I've been feeling. Um, it's hard to put it into words, the feelings that I have about the experience that I've had of being the State Teacher of the Year. So instead of putting it into words, I actually, um, if you don't mind, I wrote an original song that I'd like to perform for you today. Um, Elizabeth, can you bring me my, oh, thank you, bring me the, that's a joke, you guys, I'm just kidding. <laughs> The State Teacher of the Year makes jokes sometimes. That's not happening. Um, but thank you for hooking me up. Um, this was us a year ago. Um, this is my beautiful team. And I know, look at them! And just babies. Um, so excited for the, work, for the work, so excited to engage, so, so ready. And, um, and we still are, and I'm just so excited for, for all of you. Um, I have a few people that we absolutely have to thank. We have to start with the Burroughs Welcome Fund. You have been instrumental in guiding us, directing us, but also supporting our ideas and our vision and our mission as a team. And we just, we couldn't do it without you. This is us on Capitol Hill because of Burroughs Welcome Fund. Um, they, they supported us going and advocating and we are just so grateful. Thank you, Burroughs Welcome Fund. We love you. We also want to thank all of our sponsors. We've had a blast engaging with all of with, This is a full picture slideshow, guys. Really enjoy, OK? We're showing you my scrapbook. I'm pulling a Lisa Godwin. <laughs> it's scrapbook time. Um, we enjoyed engaging with all of you and the support that you had. And, and help, helping us help you with your mission has been incredible. Um, the State Board of Education, um, I think my favorite part of being the state teacher of the year, one of my favorite responsibilities is being an advisor. Um, Vice Chair Duncan, what you said about you actually listening, we feel that every day. When we speak and we, we advocate at the State Board, we genuinely feel like not only are we being you know, heard, but what's being said is being absorbed and put into action. And we've seen changes because of the things that we've said. And, and that means the world to us. So thank you to the State Board. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Truitt, for your love and support. And thank you to everyone from the Department of Public Instruction, including Julie Pittman, Barry Wallace, um, and our whole crew of our DPI friends, you have helped us find our places in big tables like this. And you didn't tell us to pull up our own chair. You, you created that space for us and value the things that we're saying. And I'm so excited for this team because you're going to have that opportunity too. And your voice will be valued. Um, Eugenia Floyd. <laughs> The picture on the left is our first board meeting together, and the picture on the right was like two weeks ago at the board meeting. <laughs> um, Eugene has that same smile every time I speak to her. She always has my back, as you can see in this picture. She always has a ear to listen and a kind word, and she always reminds me of something very important. I don't work for these adults. Who do I work for, Gina? I work for the kids, I work for the children, and she keeps, my, she keeps me in my zone, so thank you, Eugenia Floyd. I love you forever. You guys, Eugenia Floyd, right? Come on. I also have to thank my state principal of the year. This is Dr. Patrick Green. He sits next to me on the board, but also he just sits next to me in my heart. He encourages me, he gives me the administrator's perspective on things. I can call him and he actually answers the phone. Um, and, and he'll walk me through anything. Patrick, I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate that you decide where we're gonna eat when, we have, when we're in a new city. Um, it's very helpful to have someone like that on your team. Um, and I appreciate that you are always encouraging all of us to advocate and to be our best selves and to just go for it. Anytime we say, hey, do you wanna do something? Patrick's like, yeah, let's do it, why not? He never, he never says no, which is good to know if you're his children listening today. Okay. <laughs> um, which is probably true, actually. Um, I have to thank the, the 2022 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year team. This team, you, you guys, this team, your team is amazing, you, they are, and our team is also. The support, the love, the vision, the, the kindness, but also pushing me and each other to be our best, to do wonderful work, to help students, every student in North Carolina, not just particular students, to do the work for everybody. This team has been my, my rock, 
You have been my best friends, best friends I didn't even know I needed, <laughs> and I'm grateful I have you, the brothers I didn't know I wanted, um, <laughs> and I'm grateful that this team included our beginning teacher of the year, the incomparable Xavier Adams, and the wonderful virtual teacher of the year, Angela Haynes. Um, our team was complete because of both of you. Um, I'm going to move on because I will cry, and we're not doing that today. Hmm. Um, okay, so I have advice for the 2023, so everyone else, eat your dessert. The rest, are you focused? Okay, then I, this is for, this is just us, no one's here. We're not, there's no cameras or anything. Okay, first of all, you have a beautiful voice. You have a voice of all of your experiences, all of your, um, the things that you know about K or pre-K through 12 education. You have the voices of your students in your head and their stories. Share those stories. The way that you advocate and the way that you help and the way you move people is through telling people about other people. So the way that you get to people's hearts and their pocketbooks, maybe, um, <laughs> maybe, I don't know, but use your voice. Use your, use your voice as much as you possibly can. You've been given this wonderful opportunity and people are listening and they value your, you, you because you are a celebrated educator and we want you to do that. We want you to feel strong enough to do it. Next, relationships. I love that everywhere you go, look around this room. These are all these people in this room are here to support you. Talk to them, ask them how they can help, ask them how you can help them. Working together is how we do good things for kids, not in silos, not, oh, this district's doing this and that district's doing that together, right? Build relationships all over the state so that we can do what's best for our students. Team. <laughs> You guys already have some really fun core memories that you have made together. I've been witness to a few of them. You guys are hilarious. Did you guys know that the entire region teacher of the year team can fit into one small SUV on a ferry coming from Ocracoke Island? They all fit in one car. It's, it's crazy. Um, the, cutest, the cutest team ever. Rely on each other. They're, the, they're going through exactly what you're going through right now. They understand um, all the positions that you're in and they want to help you. This, these are your new best friends. You have to be yourself. Um, if that means dressing up like a salad for the State Board of Education meeting to promote healthy food choices, it's, the, it's for kids, okay? You gotta do the work. <laughs> Showing up as your authentic self is so important because this is how people relate to you. And so as you go on speaking engagements, as you are traveling, as you're meeting people, don't be the teacher of the year that you think you have to be. You are the teacher of the year that you have to be. Be yourself and people will celebrate it or they'll be scared of you like Governor Cooper is right here. <laughs> I was so excited to meet him. We have a normal picture too, eventually, but this one's funnier. Um, <laughs> bless his heart. <laughs> the Eugenia Floyd taught me that I work for children and so do you. All the work that you're doing is to, to help our students in North Carolina, the 1.5 million public school students that sit in our classrooms every day. All the work that you're doing is to make their lives better, to give them a better hope, to give them a better future. And if you remember that, it will keep you focused. It'll keep you going. And uh, it'll keep you awesome. And I even drank milk that day, which was mm, delicious. <laughs> I, have, I have an allergy. But I did it for the kids. The other piece of advice that Eugenia Floyd gave me that is something I'm going to remember forever is she said to us last year in this very room, she said, take your positions. You are going to be positioned in so many places, legislative buildings, boardrooms, panels, universities, schools, legislative offices, conferences, television. You are going to be given these positions. Do it. Say yes. Jump into the work. This is your time to share with others what you know about education and how you can make it better. And you need to go for it. Do not shy back because this is, your, this is the time. It's time to take your positions. So to this whole team, um, this is on all of your announcement days. And this is my team with your team. We all decided to point at you because we like to point to greatness. As teachers of the year, that's what you do, right? You point people in the right direction and you guys are the right direction. You're the ones who are bringing us into the future and we are just so proud of you. Congratulations to the 2023 team. It's time to take your positions. Thank you.
Thank you, Leah Copper, for your service. Let's give her another hand. Thank you. Okay, now it's time to introduce to you and the world our nine finalists and subsequently name the new 2023 Teacher of the Year. Now, these amazing teachers, of course, represent all of North Carolina in grand style as you have witnessed today. Dr. Jerry Oates, Deputy Superintendent of District and School Support Services at the Department of Public Instruction, will introduce each finalist and ask them to come to the stage while their own personal video is shown on the screens. Afterwards, each finalist will receive their certificate and take a photo with our State Superintendent, Catherine Truitt. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Jerry Oates, and I currently serve as the Deputy Superintendent of District and School Support Services. I'm honored to be here with you this afternoon as we celebrate these nine outstanding finalists this year. Our theme, a showcase of excellent educators, will be shared in the upcoming videos. I'm sure that Casey, Laura, Kimberly, Tina, Tiffany, Rachel, Shay, Rachel, and Ryan all share a passion for students and a passion for their profession. Now I would like to welcome our state superintendent, Mrs. Catherine Truitt, to the stage with me to recognize our finalists. Let's give her a hand as she comes. <laughs> finalists, I'm going to announce you and ask you to come to the stage and accept your certificate and take a photo with the state superintendent. First, Casey Schulte, Northeast Region Teacher of the Year. <laughs> From Bath Elementary School, Beaufort County Schools. Casey is accompanied by her spouse, her mother, and father. In addition, she's also accompanied by her superintendent, principal, assistant principal, and colleague, and best friend. My job as an educator is to empower my students and to create a classroom environment where they can build their confidence and feel safe enough to take some educational risks. It's okay, take a deep breath. It's just a spaghetti tower. We can cook it when we're done. But it's important to expose my students to diversity and perspectives because we are so limited by our own perspective. But we can learn a lot from the person sitting right next to me. So yes, I teach social studies, but I have a science educator background. And what's been really cool about this position teaching social studies is I've been able to incorporate a lot of STEM education into my classroom. And a lot of students here in the Northeast region may not have access to those opportunities to learn more about STEM education because we don't live in RTP. We don't have access to all of those museums. So I would love to create a program for our students to be exposed more to STEM education. It could be like in my social study classroom. And when we're talking about Leonardo da Vinci, they're building his parachute plans. They're creating his bridges. I just want more engagement and more hands-on opportunities for our students in association with STEM curriculum. Presenting Laura Wilson, Southeast Region Teacher of the Year from Roger Bell New Tech Academy, Craven County Schools. Yeah. 
Laura is accompanied by her spouse, mother-in-law, father-in-law, father, and stepmother. In addition, she's accompanied by her superintendent and principal. Growing up, I wanted to be an actress, and I wanted to be a paleontologist, and I wanted to be a storm chaser, and that was all within a span of a few days. And being a teacher, I get to do all of those things. My students and I explore constellations and planets when we visit the planetarium. We dig up dinosaur bones and put together fossils, and we even explore circuits and test theories as we brighten the room with different lights and sounds. I think that teaching is such an amazing privilege. Our parents and our guardians trust us day in and day out to lead and teach our most precious resource. I think it's important to note that not just in my school, in our district, in our state, but on a nationwide level, that our students have experienced learning loss in their foundational skills as well. I've seen a need to adjust my whole group lessons and incorporate explicit foundational skills while still maintaining high expectations for all of my learners. Small groups and data analysis has been critical as well as utilizing all of our staff members to meet the needs of our students. From our coaches and our MTSS coordinators to our tutors, we are working diligently to analyze data and to be there for our students, not only to close gaps, but to continue to engage them academically. My mantra this year has been gentle pressure relentlessly applied every day in order to continue to support my students and eliminate the learning loss that occurred during the pandemic. Presenting Kimberly Jones, <laughs> North Central Region Teacher of the Year from Chapel Hill High School, Chapel Hill Carborough City Schools. Kimberly is accompanied by her spouse, mother, uncle, and three colleagues. In addition, she's accompanied by her superintendent. The thing that drives me to this day understanding the life-changing power of education and for me the life-changing power of public education i firmly believe that what we do every day absolutely shapes the future i think that through education what's past does not have to be prologue i think kids can be educated they can be inspired they can be motivated they can be changed they can be driven to change the world for the better. Kids are willing to disclose when they need an extension. Kids are willing to disclose when, hey, Ms. Jones, you assigned this assignment, but I don't have these resources. That only comes after trust is built. That only comes when they know that my teacher's not gonna judge this reality of my life, or my teacher's not gonna make assumptions about me based on this thing I disclose. But that's when the most authentic education happens. That's what personalized education looks like. As a public school teacher, no matter how much I care and no matter how much I want to be there for my students, I know there's a limit to what I personally can do for that child. I may not be able to change your home situation, but what I can give you is 180 days of 50 minutes of stability, of belonging, of support, of knowing that there's someone who's gonna show up every day for you and give you that same opportunity that I received. Presenting Tina Robinson, Sand Hills Region Teacher of the Year from Mineral Springs Elementary School, Richmond County Schools. I currently work as a talent development teacher. I push into classrooms and I help teachers with identifying gifted characteristics in students and I teach different types of thinking skills and then I pull out small groups and help to enrich those skills and help grow the kids in their strengths. So, what Max wants you to realize is things are not always how they seem. 
teachers need to know who they are teaching in order for the students to learn what they are teaching. And when students know their teacher cares about them, they are so eager to please. Get to know their interests, their passions, and their strengths. Try to tie that into the content, and students will be so much more engaged. Learning will be so much more meaningful for them. I believe growth mindset is vital for students as they need to learn that it's okay to take risks and do things that are outside of their comfort zone in order to grow. It's so important for students to get used to making mistakes, experiencing failures in projects so that they know how to overcome those in their future workplace. It is so important to teach students how to think instead of what to think. It is also important for students to realize that their perspectives, their voices, their opinions, and their education is something that is uniquely theirs and no one else can take that from them. And they can use the power of those things as tools to create their own pathway to success. Cena. Tina is accompanied by her spouse, a special mentor, a colleague, and friends. In addition, she's accompanied by her principal and superintendent. Presenting Tiffany Wynn, <laughs> Piedmont Triad Region Teacher of the Year from Thomasville Middle Schools, Thomasville City Schools. Tiffany is accompanied by her father, son, and two colleagues. In addition, she's accompanied by her superintendent, principal, and board chairperson. We have to change our mindsets as educators. It's very easy to look at the behaviors of a student and write them off as just being bad. But it's more important for us to look at those underlining issues to help them through so that they can show us who they really are on an, in an educational basis. Whether it be financial, emotional, mental, physical, there are a lot of things that kids go through, their families go through, and we have absolutely no clue at all. And when we include our parents and our students in making decisions for them, then we will understand what it is that we need to do within the classroom to help them better. Our expectation for our students has to continue. Yes, our students got behind during the pandemic, but they were already behind in many aspects before the pandemic happened as well. I believe that we need to accelerate the learning for all of our students, but still meet them on an individual basis to make sure that they get what it is they need. This is where equity comes into place as well, making sure that the outside factors that affect or hinder students' ability to learn within the classroom are broken down or that those needs are met so that while the kids are in the classroom, they'll be able to focus in on their learning. I do not believe that we need to slow down, but to speed up so that we can help to close those gaps with our students. Presenting Rachel Fry, <laughs> Southwest Region Teacher of the Year from East Lincoln High School, Lincoln County Schools. Rachel is accompanied by her spouse, mother, father, and sister. And in addition, she's accompanied by her superintendent and principal. In middle school, students were not necessarily very kind but my teachers were. My teachers gave me a safe place. I felt safe, I felt seen, I felt uh, valued as a person. I very much decided then that I wanted to give that to students. I wanted to be their safe place. Every single day when you walk into the classroom and you smile at a child, when you address that child by name, when you make that child feel seen, you are making an impact and those children need you. Maybe you're not going to feel it today, but your impact could last 60, 70 years down the road. 
I believe that all students can learn and that it is my responsibility to find out how they learn. I meet my students where they are. I have adjusted my expectations, but I have not lowered them. In English, I used to be very worried about how much we read during the semester. Now I'm not worried about the quantity of what we do, but the quality of what we do. During virtual learning, my colleague and I worked together to create a unit on night that pared down the most important information. So we didn't read the entire text, but we read very powerful pieces of the text. And then we paired those with activities that, that both pushed rigor and could help our students learn empathy and to become better people. Presenting Shay Bolick, Northwest Region Teacher of the Year from South Caldwell High School, Caldwell County Schools. Shay is accompanied by her spouse, mother, aunt, and friend. In addition, she's accompanied by her superintendent, principal, and assistant principal. I never was in the classes that were for advanced students. And sometimes I would see those students doing out-of-the-box activities, experiments. I craved that. I, wanted, I was jealous. I wanted to be a part of that. And I couldn't figure out why that wasn't going on in all of the classes. So for me, I wanted to be that type of teacher. If we're expecting engagement out of students and excited kids for learning and we're expecting growth, we should want to do that as well as educators. And I think that that's important. I think that when you are fully engaged in the classroom as an adult, you're able to see if kids are going through something, if they are, um, if they're struggling, if they're hungry, and that should come first before curriculum, before any of the learning that takes place, they should learn about each other. They should build that trust because when students have a relationship with their teacher and relationships with students in their classroom, that's when true learning can take place. It's almost magical. In my classroom, I created the Beyond the Bridge campaign, which is an opportunity for kids to um, be encouraged to travel across the Hickory Bridge and to see the world and to experience new cultures. And whether they don't have the money to travel or not, I take them in our classroom through foods, through dance, through activities. I want that for kids in this area. I want them to be able to learn not just from a textbook or from a classroom, but to experience the world as well. Presenting Rachel Ray, Western Region Teacher of the Year from Madison High School, Madison County Public Schools. <laughs> Rachel is accompanied by her spouse, mother, father, and cousin. In addition, she's accompanied by her superintendent and principal. I originally graduated with a degree in history, but I minored in Spanish. And I originally wanted to be a history teacher, but all the doors for teaching history kept closing, while all the doors for teaching Spanish kept opening, and so that's where I landed. Teaching is really challenging. It is not like a factory job where you come in, you know exactly what you're doing, you know exactly how many things you have to make and how you make them. The education world is constantly changing. We have the human element involved. I never know what happened to my students the night before, Rules of education are constantly changing in Congress. I never know what new call administration is going to make. So there's lots of moving parts and moving pieces in the world of education that make it really challenging. 
In my classroom, for the most part, most students come in at ground zero. Most of my students don't come in with a ton of background knowledge in Spanish. So when the playing field is leveled, it's really easy to be able to not only teach Spanish, but also incorporate a lot of the soft skills that our students are missing that COVID took away from them. So in my classroom, we're working on how do we collaborate? How do we have a conversation? How do we talk to one another? And how do we have personal responsibility right here in this classroom? And those are traits that I feel students can take outside of the classroom no matter where they go. So not only are we speaking Spanish, but we're reading, we're writing, we're learning, we're talking, we're listening. All of these skills that students need each and every day, no matter if the world shuts down again or if we're completely open again, my students are going to be prepared for that. Last but not least, presenting Ryan Henderson, Charter Schools Teacher of the Year from Sugar Creek Charter School in Charlotte, North Carolina. Ryan is accompanied by his spouse, mother-in-law, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, and friend, and that hat. My children are young minds. I want them to have a great education, and I want that for everyone that's young. So that was my influence, my own children. My philosophy on education is this, that you should approach education using five W's and an H. What's the five W's and the H? The who, what, when, where, why, and how. This philosophy works not only in my class, it works in life. If you approach life with those questions, and you're not always going to get them answered, but at least you ask the question. You're going to have a complete work of information that you can take with you, and now you know how to move from that point on. Before you can sit down and, and give out lesson plans and let's pick up where we're supposed to be for this grade, you have to understand that these children are coming from a pandemic. Uh, a lot of the students had to go to work themselves full time to help pay the bills. When the students come through the door, we do a thing called a, a temperature check. How are you today? We don't talk a lot about mental health. We, we talk about it more than we used to, way more than we used to. We're behind a couple of years. We need to play a little catch up, but I'm not gonna force something on you. It has to be a slow release, a time release, because a lot of us are still getting our mental health together. If your mental health is not together, you're not gonna be able to receive new information. Now, would all of the finalists please stand so we can give you a final round of applause. As North Carolina State Superintendent, Catherine Truitt is focused on improving the state's public schools, expanding innovation, and creating new opportunities for students to learn, grow, and successfully transition into the post-secondary plans of their choice. Now the moment that you've all been waiting for, the State Superintendent, Catherine Truitt, will present to you the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year. Superintendent Tripp. So we're going to drag this out just a little bit more. 
So first of all, just a huge thank you to our event and program sponsors, Burroughs Welcome Fund, Go Global, Lenovo, NC State Athletics, No Kid Hungry, Hungry Bojangles, Flow Honda, and last but certainly not least, Equitable Advisors, who all make our live stream possible so that thousands of people across the state can tune into this ceremony and see how awesome all of you are. <laughs> to our sponsors, I just want to personally thank you for all that you've contributed. We could not make this day as special as it is for these fine folks were it not for you. Thank you all so very much. You know, if, if I asked 20 random people on the street, um, who was the best teacher you ever had and why? Who was the best teacher you ever had and why? Chances are the response is going to have to do with how that teacher made them feel. That is what we all remember about the people that we encounter in our lives, and that starts when we are little, and that starts with our teachers. I've asked this question so many times over the years to people, and the response is always the same. The best teacher I ever had made me feel special, made me feel wanted, made me feel amazing, made me feel like I wanted to come to school. And while all of you in this room have your own approach to your craft, that is what you all have in common. It's putting students first. <laughs> Laura, where are you? Laura, you do this, you put students first by studying the data that tells you what your students need. You then take a team approach to providing the individual supports students need while still allowing them to explore a love of learning. Kim. There you are. You do this by fostering student agency. You build authentic trust, and you serve as a guide for students so they can realize their destinies. Tina, you do this by treating your students as the unique young people they are. You know your students so well because you are able to let them experience failure in order to grow. Because you know that that is how they will become successful. Rachel Ray, you do this by recognizing that the only easy day was yesterday. <laughs> and by knowing that you are exactly where you need to be. You're preparing students for life through your dedication to rigor and relevance. Ryan, you do this by starting from a place of understanding who your students are and teaching them that asking questions is the path to learning. In seeing the whole student, you allow all students to see and achieve their own potential. Tiffany, you do this by communicating the sense of urgency you feel because you know there is no time to waste when it comes to your student success. Your commitment to ensuring that all students will recover starts by recognizing who they really are. Casey. There you are. You do this by making the impossible seem possible. You model every day that inquiry leads to learning and that growth involves risk. Your commitment to understanding students' needs begins by understanding perspective and that there is strength in our differences. Rachel Fry, you do this by giving your very essence to your students. The impact you have is driven by the fact that you have high expectations and demonstrate that empathy and rigor are equally important to success. I thank you all for choosing this profession. 
and I'm grateful for your staunch and fierce advocacy for North Carolina's public schools. Now, before we transition into the announcement that I know we're all waiting for, I have to take a minute and personally thank our 2022 Burroughs Welcome Fund Teacher of the Year, Mrs. Leah Carper. Leah, you, not only are you a dedicated champion of students, but you are a light source and have been a light source during a time that has been a little bit dark. So thank you for being so bright and real and dedicated to your students. Now, without further ado, we are going to transition to the announcement that you have all been waiting for. North Carolina's Teacher of the Year exemplifies the following qualities. This teacher keeps equity at the forefront of their pedagogical decisions, and they strive to offer a mix of in-person and virtual events so students are not excluded due to transportation or financial barriers. This teacher strives to equip their students with a diversity of meaningful learning experiences that make them more informed, empowered, compassionate, and adept global citizens for the 21st century. This teacher has helped numerous teachers provide students with appropriate and empowering information to ensure their physical and emotional safety and well being. Our next North Carolina Teacher of the Year platform will highlight the importance of experiencing and appreciating diverse pedagogies, perspectives, and insights, which is necessary for all students who want to succeed in an ever-changing world. Please join me in congratulating the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year, Mrs. Kimberly Jones. Thank you so much. Uh, first, I must give thanks to God. Without his grace, mercy, and providence in my life, I would not be standing here. I also want to thank my mother. <laughs> um, when I was very fortunate and honored to be named District Teacher of the Year for Chapel Hill Carver City Schools, I told my colleagues that um, since I was little, I always knew if I won an award, I had to thank Jesus and my mom in that order. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I want to thank my mother, Gwendolyn Jones, who was my very first teacher. On the front porch turned preschool of our double-wide mobile home in a small rural mill town called Irwin. Although I had no clue of my future endeavors at the time, she must have had an inkling 
because she instilled in me a voracious love for learning, an indomitable work ethic, an unshakable pride in my culture and ancestry, and above all, an enduring call to lead with a servant's heart and better the lives of all those around me. She has been my lifelong role model as a woman, a mother, an educator, and a change agent. I love you, Mom. Because of you, I can. To my incredible husband, Josh, thank you for being an incomparable partner, my sounding board, my principal advisor, my chief of staff, and my biggest cheerleader. Your love and support has sustained me through every commute, extracurricular commitment, and all the evenings and weekends when you sacrificed quality time together so I could plan lessons, grade essays, write rec letters, and attend PD. I could not have done this without you. To my administrators, Dr. Hamlet, Charles Blanchard, my beloved mentors, Derek and Patty Curran, and my phenomenal colleagues, Mikey, Miss Joanne, and my best friend, Kim. Thank you for your unwavering support and encouragement. Your dedication to our students, our school and community is truly inspiring. I would not be the educator I am today without the motivation, joy, drive, and excellence you've each brought to my life. You make me a better person. You call me to my highest self. You hold me accountable to my core values. And you remind me daily of the privilege and power of our positions as educators. I am beyond fortunate to work alongside you, but I am blessed to call you my friends. I must, of course, express my deepest gratitude to the Burroughs Welcome Fund and all the North Carolina Teacher of the Year Award sponsors for this incredible honor. This award represents a fundamental commitment to and appreciation of the hard work and dedication of teachers across North Carolina, but especially the eight incredible educators who make up the 2023 North Carolina Regional Teachers of the Year. I have had the privilege to see the passion and excellence each one of you bring to your classrooms, and I can't wait for the opportunity to work alongside you as we advocate for the 1.5 million students and over 93,000 teachers in North Carolina public schools. As an African-American woman from a single parent, rural, working class background, I know firsthand the transformative power of education and the impact of hardworking educators to change lives. From my neighborhood Sunday school teachers and youth group leaders to the incredible public school teachers and extracurricular directors who guided me from kindergarten to senior year with dedication and caring, I have been blessed to benefit from the gift of steadfast educators and rigorous educational opportunities. Learning changes lives. I see it every day in the faces of my students who come from all walks of life, but share a common desire for a bright and meaningful future. It is my privilege to help them achieve that future one day and one lesson at a time. In closing, I am so thankful and honored to have been named the 2023 Burroughs Welcome Fund North Carolina Teacher of the Year. Yet I know the work ahead is not about my work alone. It's about collaborating with and advancing the efforts of all the dedicated teachers in North Carolina who pour their hearts and souls into their work every day, most often without well-deserved recognition or incredible fanfare such as this. The work ahead is about listening to and collaborating with the parents and caregivers who trust and support us in our efforts to educate their children. Above all, it is about serving the 1.5 million beautifully diverse students in our, in our state 
who inspire us every day to plan with purpose, instruct with passion, and guide them with principle in the successful pursuit of their dreams. Thank you again for this incredible honor. another hand. Yes. What a wonderful event and celebration. Congratulations, Kimberly Jones. Congratulations. We look uh, forward to supporting you during your year representing North Carolina teachers. It has been my honor and, and really uh, I enjoy this every year uh, to organize this year's North Carolina Teacher of the Year ceremony. The success of the day was made possible by many, many dedicated individuals. Thanks to the families and support systems for all of our finalists and the adventure for the 2023 Teacher of the Year cohort is just beginning. Many thanks to the Regional Education Facilitator, Tina Starr, the Project Lead, and the State Recognition Committee. Where's the state recognition? Where are the refs? Refs, please stand. They do all of the work starting in the districts. They assist on the committee, and they just really dig in and get the work done. So thank you so much. Um, to the district and regional support division, communications and graphics uh, division, the Office of Charter Schools, Child Nutrition, and DPI leadership, Thank you for your role in making this day a success. Now, finalists, please take your keepsake flowers on your table and meet in the salon room since it's raining for post-event pictures. And for the rest of our guests, thank you so much for coming today and help us make this a great celebration. Many thanks to all of you. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>